In this video, we're going to learn about proofs using parallel lines and the angles that are formed when we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So the first thing is just to recall our reasons that we can use. So we've been writing these all along. So the different ones we have, so we have parallel lines. Whenever you have parallel lines, you can conclude that you have congruent alternate interior angles. So that's one pair of congruent angles. When you have parallel lines, you can also conclude that you have congruent alternate exterior angles. You can conclude that you have congruent corresponding angles. And then you can also conclude that you have supplementary same side interior or you could say even exterior angles. So remember whenever you have this picture where you have your two parallel lines and you have your transversal we can only make these conclusions when the lines are parallel. If the lines are not parallel then we can still call the angles by these names but the congruent or the supplementary part isn't true anymore. So you have to have the parallel lines to make that conclusion. So basically, we're going to use these reasons and we're going to set up what's called a proof. So proofs are just a mathematical way of explaining or justifying your conclusion that you make from some given information. So there's two types of proofs we're going to look at. One of them is called the flow proof and the other one's a two column proof. So I'm going to show you both and you can decide which method you prefer better. So I'm going to start with a flow proof. So basically what it's going to be, you're going to look, you're going to see something like this. It's going to give you some information and you're trying to prove something, meaning you need to make some conclusions using your mathematical reasoning to come up with this statement. So I'm given that the lines are parallel. So right away I go to my diagram. It says that lines L and M are parallel. So I can go ahead and I can mark those as being parallel. So you can use single arrows or double arrows to mark those are parallel. Always marking the diagrams is going to be important. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that statement down. So L is parallel to line M. And I'm going to just box that in because that's my statement. That's something that I'm concluding. My reason for that, my reason for why I just stated that is because that was given to me. So underneath that I'm writing my reason for it. Then I look at, well, what am I trying to conclude? So there's lots of things I can conclude when these two lines are parallel. I have alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles are congruent. I have um, same side or supplementary. So there's lots of different reasons you can conclude. But if you look at what you're trying to prove, I'm trying to prove that angle 3 and angle 6 are congruent. So I'm actually trying to prove that these are congruent. So the question is, why are those congruent? Well, what type of angles are those? Those are our alternate interior angles. So the next thing I do is I can conclude that or I can make that conclusion. I can say angle 3 is congruent to angle 6. Again, that's a statement I'm making. So my reason for that, well, why are those angles congruent? It's because I was told that the lines were parallel. So my next, so automatically from that, I was able to reach this conclusion because parallel lines imply congruent alternate interior angles. And since those are alternate interior, they must be congruent. So underneath that, I'm going to write my reason. So parallel lines imply congruent alternate interior angles. And that's a proof right there. That's a two-step proof. It's you started with something, you made a conclusion. And this is called a flow proof. And hopefully you're thinking, okay, it's a flow proof because it's basically a flow chart. So you start with something, you're making a conclusion that goes underneath it. The next style of a proof we're going to call a two-column proof. It's going to be basically the same idea where we're going to look at what's given and then we're going to make a conclusion. The difference is instead of using um, little boxes to write my statements and then underneath it writing my explanation or my reasons for those statements, I'm going to make a two column table that's called statements and reasons. So on this side I have statements and then on the other side I have reasons. 
So under my statement section, that's anything that's given to me or anything that I'm concluding. And the statements and what goes in the boxes in the flow proof, those are always specific to the diagram where the reasons are always your generic um, theorems or your generic definitions or rules. So they'll never be specific to the diagram. So if we look at our statements, our first statement is what's given to me. So angle L is parallel to, not angle L, line L is parallel to line M. So I can go ahead and mark that. And then that's given. So instead of putting it underneath and using a box, I'm just using a different format. So my reason for it is that that was given to me. Notice I numbered those. That's going to be important so that statement one goes with reason one or vice versa. Or you could draw like little boxes or lines underneath to create little boxes for these. You just have to be able to distinguish which statement and reason go together. So then I look at what angles I need to prove because remember parallel lines with cut by a transversal means I have several conclusions I can make but I only really care about the one that they're telling me to make, which is four is supplementary to angle four. Or six is supplementary to angle four. I just said the same thing twice. So if I look at these, it's saying that these are supplementary, which means they add to 180. Well, the reason why that's true is because those are same side interior angles, which are supplementary. So let's go ahead and just break that out. So angle four is supplementary. To, let me get rid of oops, angle four is supplementary to angle six and that's because parallel lines imply supplementary same side interior angles and you can abbreviate like I'm abbreviating um, so just keep that in mind notice too when we're writing these parallel lines is always coming first because that's what's given to me. So my reason is if you're given parallel lines, then the conclusion you can make is that those same side interior angles are supplementary. So my first part of my reason matches my given. My second part of my reason is what conclusion I made. And that's how it should be. So this type of proof is called a two column proof. So the nice thing about both of these methods is you get to pick which one you like better. So which type of proof do you like? And sometimes you might feel like doing one or then you might switch to another method. It really doesn't matter. It's up to you. So go to the next page. There's a couple um, other examples. And basically what you're going to see is now we're going to switch our reasons. So if you look at what we're trying to prove, this time we're trying to prove that the lines are parallel. So in order to prove that the lines are parallel, well, we have to know that either the congruent or the alternate interior angles are congruent or the alternate exterior are congruent, and that would force those lines to be parallel. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called the converse of these. We're going to switch the order of them. So meaning if we have congruent alternate interior angles, well, that forces those lines to be parallel because the only time that the alternate interior angles are congruent is if the lines are parallel. So this is now my hypothesis or my starting point is we're starting with the congruent angles and that's how that's going to lead me to the conclusion that the lines are parallel. So same thing, if we have congruent alternate exterior angles, that's going to imply that the lines have to be parallel. If we have congruent corresponding angles, that's going to imply that the lines must be parallel. And then if you have supplementary, same side interior or exterior angles, that's also going to imply the parallel line. So basically I took all of those statements on the previous page and I just flipped them around because now we're going to be given the set of angles and we're going to prove that the lines are parallel. So if you look at this first example, now you're given that two and six are congruent and you're trying to prove that these lines are parallel. So what you need to do is mark your diagram. So always marking the diagrams is a key idea here that we're always marking it so you can visually see what's happening. So angle two and angle six are congruent. 
that's my given. So I'll do this one as a flow proof, and then I'll do the other one as a two column. So if these two angles are congruent, I start with that. My reason for that is given. Why does that mean that the lines have to be parallel? So it means that the lines have to be parallel because if you imagine these two angles, if you take the top and slide it down, two matches up with six. So those are congruent corresponding angles. They're corresponding, and since they're congruent, that forces the lines to be parallel. So now I can say that line L is parallel to line M because I had congruent corresponding angles, which implies parallel lines. So notice how I started with the congruent angles. So in my, my reason, congruent angles, and then my proof, my conclusion I made was the parallel lines. That's why that's at the end of my reason here. That's what I got out. That's why it's after the arrow. So let's look at the last one. Now you're starting with supplementary. So you're saying four and six are supplementary. Why does that mean that the lines have to be parallel? Well, four and six are same side interior angles. So since they add to 180, that forces these two lines to be parallel to each other. So we can go ahead and write that using our two columns, just to show you a two column proof. So you start with your given. So angle four supplementary to angle six. So that's given. And my next statement here is making the conclusion. Well, if I know that those are supplementary and those are same side interior angles, that forces those lines to be parallel. So my statement is specific to the diagram. Lines L and M are parallel. My reason is my generic reason or my generic theorem that I could use in multiple proofs. So because I have congruent, um, not congruent, I'm looking at my reason up here. Because I have supplementary same side interior angles, these are supplementary same side interior. So because we have supplementary same side interior angles, that implies that those lines have to be parallel. So there's your conclusion. So these are going to be basically two steps. And remember, you can pick. You can do all of them using two columns. You can do all of them using flow proofs. You can do a combination to get used to both and then decide later what you like better. Totally up to you. But you're just looking at the diagram, what's given, and then what conclusion can you make from that specific to what you're trying to prove. So there's often multiple conclusions you can make, but in this case, what are you trying to prove and how are you going to get to that? So that's all a proof is, is just organizing your, your ideas and making conclusions on mathematically using mathematical theorems and rules.